Looking to protect your cards? Whether you need sleeves, deck boxes, binders, playmats, or even backpacks, Ultimate Guard has your collection covered. Literally. Premium products offering priceless protection. Visit ultimateguard.com. Hello and welcome to another Historic Brawl Games video. Today we're taking a look at a black-white ring bearer deck featuring Frodo, Sauron's Bane as our commander. This is a 1-mana one 1-2 one and we're going to try to win the game with its alternate win condition, which requires us first to level up Frodo to a 2-3 lifelink, paying 2 black-white hybrid mana, and then once it's a 2-3 lifelinker, we can pay triple black to turn it into a rogue that says whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player, that player loses the game if the ring has tempted us for or more times this game, otherwise the ring tempts us. So that can also build up towards the ring tempting us four times, at which point Frodo can just win us the game. So that's our game plan, play Frodo, have the ring tempt us four times, try to protect Frodo at all costs, and then in addition to Frodo being a ring bearer, we can also make it unblockable using some other effects, and that way we can hopefully hit the opponent just one time with Frodo, and just win the game on the spot. So to make that happen, I've split up the deck into a few different categories, starting with ways to make Frodo Frodo unblockable, because that's often the challenge, is to get that one last attack in to win the game if the opponent has a wide board and maybe some smaller creatures that can block our 2-3 a ring bearer. And those include Access Tunnel, built into our mana base, can tap for a colorless, or we can pay 3 mana, tap it, and a creature with power 3 or less cannot be blocked this turn. Then I've also included some of the protection effects, like Brave the Elements, God's Willing, and Shelter at 2 mana, which also draws a card. And you could also put Skrelv in that category, even if it works a little bit differently, because one of the many benefits of protection of a chosen color is that Frodo won't be able to be blocked by creatures of that color. And then we also have the extra benefit of potentially preventing opposing removal spells of that color from taking out Frodo, so these are all quite important. Then we also have a Manifold Key, which can pay 3 mana tap to make a creature unblockable until end of turn, so similar to Access Tunnel without your restriction. And then a Thief's Tools, a 2 mana equipment, equips for 2 mana but at least makes a treasure when it enters, and then the equipped creature cannot be blocked as long as its power is 3 or less. We've got Key to the City, can tap, discard a card, and then up to 1 creature cannot be blocked this turn. When it becomes untapped we can pay 2 mana to draw a card, so it gives us some additional card selection as well. There's a Wedding Invitation, which when it enters draws a card, so replaces itself, and then at some point we can tap and sacrifice it, and a creature becomes unblockable until end of turn. And then a Bilbo's Ring, also quite thematic, a 3 mana a legendary artifact, and equips a Halfling for just 1 mana, so perfect for equipping Frodo. And then as long as it's our turn, the equipped creature has Hexproof and cannot be blocked, and when it attacks alone we get to draw a card and lose 1 life. Then for our next category we have more ways of protecting Frodo. We already covered some of the protection effects and Skrelv, but now we also have ways of making Frodo indestructible, and in the case of Lauren's Escape also give Hexproof at the same time and Scry 1. There's Selfless Savior, which we can play for just one mana and then sacrifice to make Frodo indestructible until end of turn. Sheltering Light also gives indestructible and lets us cry one. There's Armor of Shadows, giving plus one plus two and indestructible. We've got Professor's Warning, which gives us the choice between a plus one counter and indestructible until end of turn. And then Mithril Coat, itself an indestructible equipment, can be flashed in for three mana, attaching to a legendary creature we control, also making it indestructible. And then we've got some more protection effects here with Surge of Salvation, where all our permanents gain Hexproof until end of turn, even more effective against black and red sources preventing the damage. We've got Duress, Inquisition of Kozilek, and Thoughtseize as discard spells, which can maybe take away removal or other answers for Frodo. And then we've got the Swiftfoot Boots, giving Haste and Hexproof to the equipped creature. Then in our next category we have some mana acceleration. Even though we have a relatively low curve deck, we still need to eventually activate Frodo's abilities, which include a triple black ability, so having a bit of mana fixing can come in handy. And Mox Amber also perfect alongside a one mana commander. We've got Dark Ritual adding triple black, especially nice alongside some of our three mana enchantments like Connections and Phyrexian Arena, which we could play on turn one already. There's Lotho, which can also make more mana whenever a player casts their second spell each turn, as we'll get a treasure token at the cost of one life. Arcane Signet, Cold Steel Heart, kind of the classic two mana ramp artifacts that also fix our mana. And then Chromatic Lantern can also be very nice to get that triple black, can even turn our access tunnel into a land that produces colored mana. And the Celestis also gives us a bit of card selection, and our deck often wants to just keep up a bunch of mana to either level up Frodo or keep up protection spells, so it's naturally going to switch between day and night, giving us a bit of extra life gain and card selection. 
Then our next category includes removal, since we still need to interact with the opponent's game plan to try and slow them down and buy us more time to win the game with Frodo's alternate win condition. So we've got Sword to Plashers at one mana, cut down, and then a Golem's Bite can also help us with the ring tempting us four times, since we can exile it from our graveyard for four mana. We've got Feed the Swarm, can also deal with enchantments. Go for the Throat, Heartless Act, Infernal Grasp, kind of your classic two mana removal spells in black. And then Orcish Bowmasters, a great new addition, can punish the opponent for drawing extra cards, dealing one damage each time, and amassing an Orc army. And then we've got a D-Spark and a Vanishing Verse as powerful multicolored options as well. And then our next big category includes a ton of ways for the ring to tempt us without needing to hit the opponent with Frodo repeatedly. That way we can get to a level 4 ring before Frodo even hit the opponent once to immediately win the game once we get to that second ability. So we've got Golem Spite as we discussed. Sam's Desperate Rescue can get a creature back from our graveyard and the ring tempts us. So sometimes if the opponent does manage to take out Frodo it can still be better to let it go to the graveyard and then bring it back with Desperate Rescue so we don't have to pay the commander tax. Just be careful if the opponent acts our creature that we do send it back to the command zone. We've got Samwise, which can be flashed in, maybe get something back from the graveyard that was put there this turn, and then also have the ring tempt us when it enters. There's Call of the Ring, which is possibly the most powerful card in this deck if we can play it on turn 2 alongside Frodo. At the beginning of our upkeep, the ring tempts us, so this will gradually get us to a level 4 ring without doing anything else, and whenever we choose a creature as a ring bear, can even be the same creature repeatedly, we may pay 2 life if we do draw a card. It's also a very powerful card draw engine. And then we've got a Boromir, can be sacrificed to make our creatures indestructible until our turn. And then we can also have the Ring Tempt us at the same time, and can also potentially punish the opponent for casting free spells, which can come up in Historic Brawl if you're facing Emoti, which has Cascade, or the First Sliver, so it can be pretty effective against those strategies. And then we've got all nine of the Nazgul, which are three mana, one, two, Wraith Knights with Death Touch. When they enter the battlefield, the Ring Tempt us, and whenever the Ring Tempt us, put a plus one plus one counter on each Wraith you control. So if we have multiple Nazgul in play and the Ring Tempt us, they will all pick up a plus one plus one counter for each Nazgul in play, so they also scale very nicely in multiples. And a deck, of course, can have up to nine cards named Nazgul, so they break the Singleton rule in Historic Brawl, and of course we've got one of each art. Then Acclaim the Precious, a 3 mana sorcery destroying a creature and the ring tempts us. Inherited Envelope, another ramp artifact and when it enters the ring tempts us. And War of the Last Alliance, a 4 mana saga. On the first two chapters we can search our library for a legendary creature card, put it into our hand. But we're most interested in the final chapter where creatures we control gain double strike until end of turn and the ring tempts us. So by giving Frodo double strike, even if we only have a level 3 ring, we could still win the game that turn because Frodo will still hit the opponent with first strike, get the ring to level 4, and then hit the opponent again, and then the last ability will go off and to win us the game. And then our final category includes a bit more disruption and card draw, with Curse of Silence naming the opponent's commander, perfect in a low curve deck like this one where we're trying to quickly disrupt the opponent and win the game. We've got Esper Sentinel to tax the opponent's non-creature spells, Got Reprieve as a 2 mana pseudo counter spell, can be quite effective if the opponent taps out for something expensive and we can just send it back for 2 mana while drawing a card. And all these instants like Reprieve and the various protection spells can also be quite effective alongside Frodo, because if the opponent doesn't force us to play those instants, we can still level up Frodo into a 2-3 lifelink and then potentially use the last ability as well. And then we've got our Black Market Connections, perfect to play early to develop our mana and draw extra cards. And then Phyrexian Arena can also draw us more cards at the cost of one life. And then of course the One Ring, also quite fitting in this deck, has another powerful card draw engine. And then our mana base, besides Access Tunnel, includes quite a bit of mana fixing, since we do need access to white mana to play Frodo early on, as well as eventually triple black for the last ability, so we can use all the dual lands, especially the untapped ones are quite valuable in this deck. And then we've got the Abandoned Mire and Iganjo's extra channel lands, and then Castle Lockthwain can also be another card or engine, although usually you don't have time to activate it a whole lot. So that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play, facing the first sliver. Could be five color good stuff, could be sliver tribal. Our hand is not bad. Double Nazgul, Boromir. So a couple ways for the ring to tempt us. Question is whether to tap out for Frodo or have a look with Inquisition first. And it's a tough call, but let's go with Inquisition, make sure they don't have a one mana removal spell. And uh, Voidrend. Is good removal, and it does look like Silver Tribal. 
So could take the Void Rend, could take Fable, which is good mana fixing, and card selection. Void Rent we can potentially counteract with Boromir, so I'll take the Fable. And then Access Tunnel is going to be a great way to make Frodo unblockable. In case being a Ring Bearer is not quite good enough. Turn to Diffusion Sliver. Could make our Vanishing Verse more expensive. But uh, yeah, not gonna take any risks, just play Boromir to protect Frodo. And can attack for one. Chromatic Lantern can potentially set up a uh, first sliver next turn already. And we found our own. So I can play Lantern, a level up Frodo. And then Masked Vandal doesn't have a creature to get rid of to exile Lantern. And next turn play Nazgul, maybe Vanishing Verse. A Lantern letting Access Tunnel tap for colored mana is quite useful too here. And what do they cascade into? Enduring Sliver. Fair enough. And wow, Boromir actually counters the cascade from the first Sliver. Totally missed that interaction. So Boromir is the perfect answer here. Okay, so just play a Nazgul. And probably keep up our Vanishing Verse. Although I guess with a Diffusion Sliver I'm not gonna have many targets for Vanishing Verse here, so it may be fine to play. Even if I don't expect to use it all that much. Doesn't cost me any mana, unlike Access Tunnel. Void Ren Boromir. And Frodo can stay the Ring Bear. So up to level 2 here on the ring. Okay, Cloud Shredder is pretty scary. If our opponent cascades into a Sword to Plowshares, they could still get rid of Frodo. It's going to be a strike at Rich to make a treasure. Their opponent could hit us for 9 in the air, but they're going to hang back. Okay, I guess we're going to end up using Key to the City anyways. And then I can discard Vanishing Verse, play Nazgul, and level up Frodo. So that gets us the win next turn, potentially. If our opponent didn't have any creatures in Graveyard yet to enable Masked Vandal, I would maybe not attack with Nazgul here, but I think I'm okay offering the trade, since we already countered a sliver with Boromir. Level up Frodo. And attack. If they want to trade for first sliver, that's fine. Opponent takes it. And then next turn we should be able to win with Frodo's ability. So they have one turn to find an answer. And a couple cascades from the first Sliver perhaps. Sliver Hive Lord to make their team indestructible. And what does it cascade into? Big moments. Striking Sliver cascades into a zero mana card. But that's not going to do it here. Mox Amber. I guess they could still now play another Sliver and potentially Cascade into a removal spell. On the board they don't have quite enough. So yeah, this would have been an impossible board to attack into with our Nazgul and other creatures, with our team having Indestructible and uh, First Strike. Sticky Fingers also doesn't do it here. But the fact that our deck attacks from a different angle with Frodo and various unblockable effects it's still going to get us the win, hopefully. 
Your opponent can take out one of our artifacts by exiling their Enduring Sliver, which got countered by Boromir. And then not gonna pay since we need the mana for access tunnel. Although we could have just used key to the city once again. And sneak Frodo through for the win. Awesome. A very satisfying game here. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing a Marrow Gnar deck, typically a Rat Colony deck with lots of Rat Colonies, and that can be pretty aggressive. Our deck doesn't play any sweepers, so this could be a tough matchup. Our hand is also pretty poor, the rest is probably going to miss, and then missing white mana as well. Okay, Skrelv could come in handy. Don't think we need Manifold Key necessarily, or a Professor's Warning, but I guess this could help us trade for a rat. So sure, I'll try it. And then turn one. Could play Skrelv first and then play Frodo. Command Tower helps. Yeah, just to be safe, playing Skrelv first might be better. Although, maybe I just want to play Frodo and be able to level it up right away. So we can attack past the 2 1 Rat Colony. And then we'll be playing Pathway on Black to have the triple black a little bit sooner. So we can level up Frodo at instant speed. Don't think our opponent's blocking anyways. So let's level up Frodo. The alternative is play Skrelf, keep a Professor's Warning, but the Rat Colony deck typically doesn't have much removal. Just about playing rat colonies to pump up each other. So now play Nazgul. And then uh, Frodo can attack past the rat colony since it's going to be a ring bearer. So at least the opponent's not going to be able to block Frodo all that easily. Don't know if we're going to outrace the rats. Nazgul is fine to trade. And then starting next turn, we'll have a bunch of protection up. So it's going to be close. This is a double rat colony turn. Ooh, opponent's got the shinobi to make his discard. I guess we had a few useless cards in hand anyway. So manifold key is pretty expensive to activate. Skrelv kind of does the same. So that can go, and then... I guess Surge of Salvation could go as well. A War of the Last Alliance, that's an interesting one. So we can search a Legendary twice and then give Double Strike and the Ring tempts us. So the Double Strike and Ring tempting us could potentially set up Lethal in that turn. Although, of course, a Shinobi could hit us in the meantime. Unless I just play Skrelv and pass and then I can level up Frodo as well. So that may be worth it. So if they attack, I can block and Professor's Warning. Opponent goes for a Maronar. Shinobi has Fear, so it can only be blocked by black creatures or artifact creatures. But uh, we can just hang on to the War of the Last Alliance and then level up Frodo. Okay, Mox Amber is a good way to empty out our hand. So, the Marinar is going to make an army of rats next turn. We can search up a legendary. Don't think we have any one mana legendaries left, but that's okay. Yeah, we have Lotho, Samwise, and Boromir. So whatever I search up now will end up discarding. So I guess we'll make it Lotho, since the other two can attempt the ring just by playing them. And then I may as well use Skrelf here. And attack. So the ring goes to level 2. Opponent can empty out our hand and make a ton of rats. 
next turn either get uh, Boromir or Samwise. And then the turn after is where we're trying to set up lethal with Skralf naming black. Okay. Echoing return, getting back to rat colonies, but they can't play them. And search for probably Boromir here. Can play it. And then as opposed to playing the boots, I think we just save ourselves the damage to attack with Frodo using Skrelv. Because yeah, the one ones would be able to block a two power to ring bear, but Skrelv helps out. And then now, Curse of Silence naming Rat Colony is actually pretty funny in this matchup. And then next turn with a double strike, we should be able to close out the game, especially. So I don't have to sacrifice it, we can just keep it in play to make them cost 4 mana. So there's a 4 mana rat colony. Whatever we draw here, we would end up discarding to the shinobi anyways. So Marinar gives all rats fear, so we won't actually be able to block with Boromir. Might have been a reason to keep a Lotho in the deck as an extra blocker late game. So might have been better off uh, fetching up Sam and discarding it to the Shinobi. So you just have to take it and fall to three. So yeah, that was close to being lethal. Had to been able to play more rank colonies, we might have been dead. So now we get to untap. Creatures we control gain double strike. Ring up to four. Frodo stays ring bear. Skralf on black. And smash. And that should do it. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing the five color Shrines deck, and our hand seems pretty decent. The rest is gonna have plenty of targets, and then a Manifold Key to make them blockable, Cold Seal Heart for ramp. And the question is what to play on turn one. And uh, while it's tempting to duress, I think I prefer playing Frodo. So that turn two we Cold Seal Heart, and turn three we can double spell Boromir and duress perhaps, or level up Frodo. Just counting on the opponent not having a one or two mana removal spell early on. But most of their deck is legendary shrines and uh, other enchantment synergies. Curse of Silence is interesting now, so we could double spell it with Duress. And a Grim Tutor is the only target. And Curse names their life's origin. So that's going to be delayed by another turn at least. As our opponent can play Gilded Goose for ramp. But they don't have much else going on. Next turn probably still go for Boromir and then turn after Cold Steel Heart, a level up Frodo and then key to make unblockable. Arcane Signet, all right now I'm kind of liking Signet plus Cold Steel Heart. And I'll name white, I think, since we already have plenty of black mana. And then no real point in attacking into the Gilded Goose. I suppose we could have attacked first, threatened to pump, and that way get one damage in when they don't block with Gilded Goose. But uh, our plan's typically not to win with damage. So opponent makes a 1-1. One, one. And now the race is on. So I can level up Frodo. We don't have a ring bearer yet. So we'd have to use Manifold Key for it to get through. Or I could sacrifice Boromir. Yeah, I guess that's fine. And 
And then starting next turn, it's just going to be leveling up Frodo, activating Manifold Key. Sterling Grove can likely get an answer for Frodo now, so that's too bad. But we'll see. Possible they just get their five color a legendary shrine. Opponent gets a stasis field. Yeah, that would uh, take care of Frodo pretty nicely. And the Laurens escape now, the perfect top deck. We got lucky there. So activate Frodo. Activate Manifold Key, and then we still have a mana left. But let me make sure to tap carefully. So triple black. Activate key. And keep up Loron's escape. Opponent goes for stasis fields. We give hexproof. And then two more turns of uh, Frodo attacking to win the game, unless we can find another temptation effect. Dance of the Mains, get back Sterling Grove, so that can once again find an answer. Although they can't sacrifice it now, but they could do it in upkeep. So I think that's still gonna beat us, unfortunately. Alright, don't have much going on. Can attack, activate Manifold Key. Unless we can draw into some other spell here, Nazgul. Now, of course, we can still replay Frodo and build our way up. But uh, if they have another stasis field-like effect, they can shut out our commander completely. So I think I switched Nazgul to be the ring bearer now. So yeah, put him put an upkeep stop to sacrifice Sterling Grove and find another answer. And I'm afraid that's going to be just a little bit too much for us to handle. Yep, Mystic Subduel. That also shuts down our abilities. So I need to find a way to remove the enchantments, which there aren't many effects in our deck that can do that. But I guess we can also just uh, activate Manifold Key on Nazgul, which is... A yeah, level 4 ring bearer, so gets to draw this card and deal additional damage here. Alright, I'm gonna hang on to my lands, I suppose. And Life's Origin can also put the enchantments from their graveyard back into play. And they're going to start with the uh, stasis field shutting down our Nazgul. Brave the Elements. Okay. So Brave the Elements naming blue would let the Mystic Subduel fall off. And then we activate Manifold Key and that's game. One of the many effects of protection is that it removes any enchantments or equipment of that color. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing the Arch Lich, and this is typically a controlling deck that's looking to combo off with Paradox Engine. So Curse of Silence, naming either Lich or Paradox Engine could be effective, although the rest of our hand leaves a lot to be desired since we don't have a way to protect Frodo from removal. So I'll take a mulligan, and draw our Curse of Silence again, and now a Selfless Savior to protect Frodo. Alright, sign me up. Could use an extra White Source to curve out, and there we go. So turn one, I guess, go Curse of Silence, and then whether to name Paradox Engine or the Arch Lich is interesting. I think we'll just name the commander, keep it simple. Talisman to get the Paradox Engine. So now we can play Savior and Frodo. And have it be protected. And then next turn, probably still fine to tap out for Nazgul, depending on Savior still being alive. And Bowmasters could also be pretty effective. I think this is still a turn for Nazgul. 
or we could keep up Reprieve to maybe counter a removal spell or sweeper that gets past Indestructible. And then if we don't need to cast it, I can still level up Frodo. Sam's Desperate Rescue getting back Savior seems pretty effective too. So maybe I still tap out for Nazgul this turn. Hope they make us use Savior. So next turn I can Desperate Rescue, replay Savior, and keep up Reprieve slash Frodo's ability. And then Reprieve could also be handy to counter a Paradox Engine. Opponent just playing a couple of ramp artifacts, that's part of their plan. Okay. And then we will need to find a few more ways to potentially have the ring tempt us. But of course the final level of Frodo can help us there as well. Network Terminal draws and discards. Torment of Hailfire, not too effective, could eventually be a finisher. And a final parting to search whatever card they want. Reprieving here might be alright. Although, opponent next turn could just use Talisman to cheaply search up whatever card they want and cast it in the same turn. I think I just reprieve to use my mana efficiently. Get to untap. Okay, so now what? Activate Frodo or play Nazgul. A sweeper is probably going to get us anyways. So maybe just level up Frodo and then hope that uh, Selfless Savior is enough protection. Inventor's Fair can also search a Paradox Engine. And there's a Ritual of Soot. Alright, so Selfless Savior seems to be enough to save Frodo at least. So that worked. Desperate Rescue, get back. Selfless Savior. Although if we just go Rescue plus Nazgul, we would get to level 4 and be able to attack for the win. Opponent's Looting. But if they have a one mana removal spell like Fatal Push or Cut Down, they could still get us. Well, I guess there's one way to find out if it's gonna work. Play Savior. Alright, we've got our protection in place. So now play Nazgul. Get the ring to level 4. And that does it. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play facing Ivy Gleeful Spell Thief. So it's going to be a pretty aggressive deck looking to put a bunch of auras on their creatures and maybe mutate. So I don't need to keep too many reactive spells like God's Willing. Prefer having more removal to interact with. So this hands a mulligan. Okay, the Bowmasters could be pretty effective in the matchup. And we've got Manifold Key to make them blockable, so seems like a keeper. And then hopefully the Bowmasters can take something out. Also the flexibility of leveling up Frodo. I'll wait to see if our opponent plays Ivy. Otherwise I'll take one, and then maybe just level up Frodo end of turn. Storm Tamer? Okay, that's fine. So our opponent might still have another protection spell in hand, so... Not gonna run out to Bowmasters just yet. Okay, now we have quite a few options. Can attack with Frodo, see what happens. Could... Play Nazgul first. Or we could keep up the Bowmasters to maybe snipe the Storm Tamer here. And then I can still play Manifold Key at the very least. So now our opponent could play Ivy and sacrifice Storm Tamer to take out the uh, Bowmasters trigger basically to save Ivy. But that would make them tapped out.
Your opponent's just gonna attack. Yeah, let's Bowmasters anyway. And then deal with the Storm Tamer first. Not sure how many draw spells the opponent's gonna be playing that could maybe enable the Bowmasters an additional time. Okay, ram through, kills the Bowmasters. And Storm Tamer counters a trigger, which also prevents us from amassing. But uh, yeah, now we still have a Frodo in play. We've got multiple cheap removal spells to interact with Ivy. Uh, I guess the Spark doesn't work. But uh, now I could play Nazgul, keep attacking. And then trying to hit an extra Black Source to level up Frodo. Take one. Opponent gets to draw with Charter Course, so it would have been pretty nice with uh, Bowmasters in play. And a Storm Chaser Drake. Okay, still no triple black. So just attacking with what we have. Could consider Golem Spite on Drake before the opponent gets to untap. Since their opponent's got quite a bit of mana to replay Ivy at this point. The next turn we could exile Golem Spy to attempt a ring. Uh, Ledger Shredder's next. And Ivy triggers Shredder. Now with Manifold Key we can still make Frodo unblockable. Could play Mithril Coat as well, just for extra protection. Since we're not using our mana elsewhere. Another Nazgul's decent too. So we'll play that, keep up Surge of Salvation. And then now Frodo attacks, so we get to loot with it at least. Discard our D-Spark, which probably doesn't have many targets. Find another nice ghoul. And IV Trumps, although they might have a way to make it indestructible here. I'm your safekeeping, that makes sense. So, no creatures die. Ooh, Vesuvian Duplomancy, that could be quite effective. Does our opponent have another spell left to target their creatures and make a copy? For now we get to untap. Key to the city, more redundancy to make unblockable. So we still need to level up Frodo one more time, but we don't have the black mana for it. And then we need to attempt to ring a few more times. And I guess just playing another Nazgul is the easiest way to do it. Adds another creature to the board. Nazgul are getting out of hand. They're quite a bit better in multiples. And Key to the City can go. And Boromir can also attempt the ring. So we're just a black source away from potentially getting there. But the Nazgul might just get there with regular damage. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Tom Bombadil, five color sagas, and our hand features one of our more exciting cards. Call of the Ring on turn two can be incredibly effective. We've got a bit of protection, and then ways to make them blockable. So we've got all the tools we really need. 
Just gotta hope Frodo doesn't get taken out in the first turn or two. Because I would like to tap out for Call of the Ring as soon as possible. I reckon a raid is fine. And now we've got a Swords to Plowshares for Tom. Alright, so we immediately get to draw. The shields are up with Sheltering Light. So I'm not gonna tap out here, but we can play Thieves' Tools. Could have also just leveled up Frodo end of turn, although could still do that with our treasure. And then Frodo can attack past the captain just by virtue of being the ring bearer. The Blood Sky Massacre that happens makes a 2-3 Berserker. Don't think we need to Swords anything. But I don't mind leveling up Frodo to start getting some life. Now our opponent would be able to block unless we equip the Thieves tools. Although if they double block, I guess we could source to plowshares. Inquisition could come in handy and a connections. So we've got a ton of options now. If I tap out for Inquisition plus connections, then we don't have sheltering light up. But I guess we can check if the coast is clear with Inquisition, and then unless our opponent top decks an answer, we should be alright. So, some powerful cards, but no real answers to Frodo. And now the question is, do I attack? I could Swords the 2-3, opponent loses Captain, and then the second chapter would be a lot less exciting. They could, of course, just block with the 2-3 by itself. But, um... Yeah, interesting spot. I think going for an attack is reasonable. And Professor's Warning, not quite as good as Sheltering Light, I think. Could also discard a Nazgul since we have Call of the Ring that's helping us tempt the ring anyway. Opponent does double block. So, take out both creatures here. And then now I could equip tools, hope they don't top deck removal. I think that's worth it. Otherwise we end up wasting two mana. Alright, merriment happens. And command tower gives us triple black. So if I activate Frodo now, we don't quite win the game, but next turn we can. So, play Connections, attack for two. And then with the Thieves' Stools we should be able to attack for the win. We've got two ways to make Frodo indestructible, although there could be ways to exile it instead. Opponent taps out for Tom, that's fine, so the ghost should be clear now. The Bowmasters can also take out a 3 1. And that should wrap things up. Even without the Thieves' Tools, we can attack past Tom, and this doesn't matter. Alright. Level up Frodo. Attack. And win the game. Sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, facing Aragorn the Uniter. And our hands should be decent. Call of the Ring, probably the best card in the deck if you can play it turn two with Frodo out. And uh, yeah, I could play Skrull first to protect Frodo. But since we have Brave the Elements, I'm just hoping our opponent doesn't have a one mana answer lined up here. Okay. Yeah, let's just go for Call of the Ring since we need the card draw. And hope our opponent doesn't take out Frodo for one more turn. 
And then next turn we'll have multiple ways to protect him. Pippin's fine. So Frodo's a ring bearer, pay two life to draw, and hit our land drop for the turn. Ooh, nice Bilbo's ring can also make our halfling unblockable for pretty cheap. Although for now, might be better off playing Skralf, and then cut down answers Pippin. Although, let's see, it's Ward 1, so we could still pay for it. Yeah, that seems reasonable. Although I could also keep up the uh, armor of Shadows for the time being, and then only cut down if the coast is clear. So I'll have to take two more damage from Pippin. Scroll of Isildur can steal Skralf, which is an artifact here. Would have been pretty thematic with Bilbo's ring as well. So now we can cut down Pippin, since we can brave the elements here. Okay, Vanishing Verse could get rid of Scroll of Isildur, that may be worth it. Frodo gets to draw and discard here, so we'll maybe start there. See what else we pick up. Um, Boromir. Hmm, interesting hand. On the one hand, I want to keep developing my mana, maybe play Celestus, keep up Brave and Armor. Next turn, our opponent can keep Frodo tapped down, so getting rid of Scroll might be alright. So in that case, what do we get rid of? Could see War of the Last Alliance just being too slow. We already have Call of the Ring as our card draw engine. So yeah, let's free Skrelv and hope that armor is enough protection here. Would have loved to be able to play Celestis and then play something afterwards, but we'll have to wait. For mana, for build the pony, okay. Does block our ring bear quite well if it weren't for Skrelv. And I guess now with a level 3 ring, we would finish off Bill if it blocks. But uh, they could also trade for it then. Okay, so let's see here. If we play Bilbo's ring and equip it, we're tapped out, so that seems a bit risky. So I think I prefer just activate Skrelv, paying 2 life. Name white. Attack, see what we draw. I still need to level up Frodo for the alternate win condition to work. Okay, Courtyard can go. So now I can play Celestus, keep up our two protection spells, and if our opponent taps out, just uh, level up Frodo, and then next turn level up again, and then potentially set up the win with Call of the Ring getting us to level 4. So yeah, just hoping our opponent taps out. We should have most interaction covered with these two instants. Opponent passes. Okay, so I'm not going to tap out to level up Frodo in that case. Celestus also triggers. Keep drawing. Cold Seal Heart doesn't seem necessary anymore, or does it? Possible that Bilbo's Ring is not really needed since we have Skrelv instead. I don't really see myself tapping out for this. And find a land. So I could level up Frodo twice, attack, and then still have Brave the Elements for protection. Sure, let's go for it. So name white. Attack. Get to loot. Swords to plowshares. Could come in handy. Discard Coal Seal hard now. And then have to be careful with how we tap our mana. Level up once. And level up twice. And between armor and brave, I'm hoping we can beat whatever card opponent plays. Okay, the uh, Soaring City. Yeah, that's actually going to beat us, because 
Brave the Elements can't name blue because this isn't a blue effect. And armor doesn't give hexproof, it only gives indestructible. So they actually found a way. Yeah, fair enough. So back to hand. Skrelv also wouldn't have helped here. So now do I tap out for Frodo once again? Feels a bit sketchy without a way to protect it, but I guess we can just replay it for three mana if they take it out, so seems fine. Okay, so the game goes on. We are still drawing a ton of extra cards here with Call of the Ring, and our opponent needs to constantly keep up answers for Frodo. They're still missing green mana for Aragorn, but if they tap out for it, they could just be dead. Skrelv names white and level up twice. And our opponent explodes, awesome. Yeah, Call of the Ring I would argue is the best card in this deck alongside Frodo. Gets you to a level 4 ring bear without any extra investment while drawing a ton of extra cards. So it gives you more interaction to deal with the opponent's threats while helping you draw into more ways to protect Frodo at the same time. So yeah, I'm quite impressed with how this Frodo deck turned out. And if you like the ring bearer mechanic, this is probably the best home for it. Gives you a fun alternate win condition. The deck sort of plays out like your infects or hexproof deck from uh, modern a few years ago. Kind of protect your one threat at all costs. But at the same time, you have a few alternate angles of attack with a Nazgul also growing to real threats. So it's a pretty interesting deck to play. It is gonna try and enact the same game plan every time but the way you get there usually differs from game to game so it keeps things interesting and it's not a deck where you can just play on autopilot you still need to make quite a few decisions along the way so it seems like a perfect 1v1 brawl deck so yeah that's gonna do it for today's gameplay wanna thank you for watching hope you enjoyed and as always have a nice day I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.